Okay, before we get started, let me remind everyone to please turn off their cell phones during news conferences. Additionally, flash photography is not permitted. Welcome to Stanford's press conference. Stanford's sports information contact is Wilder Treadway. Joining us on the podium are head coach Tara Vanderveer and student athletes Cameron Brink and Lexi Hull. Coach Vanderveer, would you like to make an opening statement? Uh, first of all, I want to uh, congratulate uh, Kansas on a great season and, you know, um, at, at halftime, I wasn't really sure who was going to Spokane. Uh, they have a, a really exceptional team, and we had to play really well in the second half. Uh, I think it really boiled down to we had Lexi and they didn't. I mean, she was on fire. She played a great game, um, you know, possibly her last game in Maples, but she really showed out. And I'm just being hopeful, Lex. Um, and uh, Cam, I thought Cam had a great game. Uh, you know, too. She really uh, battled in there. It was very physical, and uh, bo uh, I thought our team really stepped up. Um, we needed different people. Uh, Haley helped uh, run our offense um, when we got uh, a couple people in foul trouble, but uh, today was Lexi's day. Thank you, Coach. We'll now take questions for the student athletes. As a reminder, please state your name and affiliation at the beginning of your question. Please limit yourself to one question at most one follow-up. If you're on the Zoom call, please use the raise hand function and I will call on you if time permits. All right, Michael Robertson, African-American athlete. All right, uh, Lexi, this probably is your last game, pending what Tara said. <laughs> um, what went through your mind when you stepped on that court saying that this may be my last time then to have a fantastic game like that? Is it what you dreamed when you first came here? I mean, yeah, uh, Lacey and I looked at each other before we started running out and we said to each other, you know, this is our last one running out in Maples. And so we wanted to give it everything we had. And I think we did that tonight. Um, from the jump and then especially coming in the second half, we knew it was over if we didn't win. So we didn't want it to be over. We wanted to make it Spokane. And it's awesome to have a night like tonight in Maples with a crowd like we had. Um, I really felt the love, really felt the support, and it was super exciting. Michelle Smith, Pac12.com. Lexi, last year Kiana got to go to her hometown and play, and you guys spent a long time there, but that's a weird, <laughs> different thing. Yeah. Um, but the that motivation to get to Spokane, I mean, obviously to win, but how motivated are you to take this team to your hometown now? I think it's an extra. I think everyone, you know, wanted to get wants to get to Spokane. No one wants to be done. Um, but for Lacey and I to be able to play at home one last time meant a lot to us. Meant a lot to our family. Meant a lot to our friends. So there was that extra, you know, chip on our shoulder that it meant a little, a little bit more for us. And um, I think it just came to that, came down to that extra piece of us, just our team wanting it more than them. And um, just super, super happy, super excited to be heading home. Um, for both Lexi and Cam, uh, Ann Killian with the San Francisco Chronicle, it was a really physical game. It looked like you wanted to leave part of your body at Maples <laughs> Pavilion on the court. Um, can you just talk about the physical aspect of it and, and how bruised up you'll be tomorrow? I think we saw it in the first half especially, um, and we knew going in, our coaches told us they're a very physical team, and we played some physical teams this season. Um, so I think that helped us prepare a little, but you don't really – feel it until you hit the ground the first time. Um, and we definitely felt it tonight, but I'm proud of our team for getting gritty and bouncing back from those. Uh, ben Parker, CardinalSportsReport.com. Um, for the players, was there anything that Tara said at halftime that kind of allowed you guys to flip the switch? Any messages that was said? Because it was a close game at halftime. Two-point game, and you guys came out and just blew them out in that third quarter. Anything that was said, or what was kind of the message? Um, Tara, I think, made a point to us that we weren't playing our best, to put it nicely. Um, we, we knew we could play a lot better, and I think, you know, we didn't want to come back into the locker room on a loss and our season being over. And I think that was the message for all of us, was to get out there, lay everything out on the court, and hopefully be able to play another day, practice another day together. Um, and so that was the message. We, we don't want to go home. Matthew Walter, the next hoops. Lexi, you had 11 at the half, and the game's a two-point game, and you come out in the second half and you put up 25. I know you know, something was said, but what inside of you in that second half where you just flipped the switch and went from having 11 points to just 25 in just the half alone? Um, I think it's just I really wanted it. Um, 
you know, in the back of my head, I was like, I, I want to play in Spokane. There's my entire body wants to play in Spokane. And um, it's just our team. We really kept the ball moving, found the hot hand, and, and ran with it the rest of the game. Um, definitely wouldn't have gotten 36, 36 points um, without, without everyone else. So uh, credit to everyone. Hi, Cam. Janie McCauley from Associated Press. Um, how much did you guys try to take it at Jackson at, at every chance? And just, just also, the, the game opened up when your perimeter players were able to do what they could, and, and that seemed like a, a real factor. Yeah, I think the goal is to get people in foul trouble because she's obviously like a huge part of their team. So, um, yeah, I just tried to take it at her. She definitely blocked my shots a couple times, which I'm not used to. Um, but I definitely just tried to find Lex as much as I could because when Lex's hot, she's hot. So she doesn't miss. Cam, for you, watching some high seeds fall today, some two seeds go down, was that, is that just something that you, you look at and you go, huh, we better not that let that, that happen to us, or do you just put that away? Yeah, um, it's kind of scary, honestly, and everyone's so good, and rankings really don't matter at the end of the day. It's like who plays their best and whoever continues to play their best. So I think that's a huge piece to it, and I think – Tara said to us at halftime, like, they're playing like they want it more. And I think that really struck a chord with us. Like, we, we want to always put our best out there. So, so yeah, I mean, I think you just got to keep playing as hard as you can. Cam, uh, everybody had, had different motivations, but you had the Curry girls cheering you on up there. And just uh, what a crowd. I mean, what, what did that mean to you? Yeah, I mean, I just want them to play basketball one day. You know, hopefully they watch and they want to play or any sport, honestly. Um, but, yeah, I think – them and any other little girl out there. So yeah, I do it for them. Uh, hi, Lexi. Harold Gabbin with the San Jose Mercury News. Um, it wasn't just the 36 points, you had six steals as well. Was that one of those games where just your defense was beating your offense or vice versa? Yeah, I think every game, you know, I feel like if I can play hard on defense, that definitely translates, um, gets us, gets our team into a groove um, when we can get a stop and go down and, and get a and get a bucket. So I think it definitely goes hand in hand. And those steals, I think, just come down to following the scout and, and knowing what they're running. Um, and that's a, a credit to the coaching staff. Lexi, now that the game's over and you've sort of had some time to just think, just what are some of the things about playing in Maples and playing here at Stanford that you're going to remember most if you decide not to come back? I think it's just the love and support from the fans. I, I really, really felt it tonight. I think every senior leaving the court, everyone stood up, everyone was cheering loud, and you really felt it. Um, people all the way up in the high, high bleachers. Uh, we, we could see it, we could feel the support, and that means the world. And it's definitely a place I'm gonna miss playing in, yeah. We'll take one more question from the Zoom. Lindsay, you can ask your question. Hey, Lex and Cam, Lindsay Snell from USA Today. Uh, congrats, Lex. Uh, Cam, when Lex came out of the game, you were celebrating with her on the bench, really happy. And I know that you have talked before about being so close to these seniors. And at senior day, in particular with Lexi and Lacey, you were a wreck. Can you talk about why you just love them so much? What What is it about yeah. them? Oh, my God. Now I'm going to get emotional again. Um, Right as before we ran out, I looked at Lex and Lacey. I was like, I'm going to start crying right now. And Lacey told me, she's like, not yet. She was like, she's so serious. She was like, don't cry, Cameron. <laughs> and I don't know. They're just, they're the heart of our team. They really are. They're, they're the glue. Um, and off the court, too, they plan every, like, function we do as a team. Um, <laughs> I'm just, Lex is such a great person. And I just love you. That's all I can say right now. <laughs> Thank you, Cameron and Lexi. You can head back to your locker room. Now we'll take questions for Cam, Coach Vanderveer. <laughs> As a reminder, please state your name and affiliation at the beginning of your question. Half time I was crying. Okay, Coach Michael Robertson, African American athlete. All right, Coach, when Anna got those first couple fouls, did that just alter the way you guys were going to play the first half? Uh, it wasn't just Anna, uh, it was Anna, Haley, and Lacey. Um, you know, and I think that just uh, we needed other people to step up, and Lexi did. Uh, I think that, um, you know, we, we, need, we need people to really understand they've got to be ready. I thought uh, Jana came in, had three assists. That was great. Um, Hannah Jump, I thought, contributed. She had some big threes for us. 
Uh, Lacey's three with one second. That was that was a good one. Um, but you know the fouls. Uh, you know Anna's a great defender, and so is Lacey. But they have to play without fouling. Um, so hopefully they'll learn and and they realize how important they are for us out there. But other other people, uh, you know, I was upset about it. I was getting on them about it. I was getting on the refs about it. But uh, we did a much better job in the second half. Tara. Michelle, over here. The physicality, um, your your kids took it pretty well, and they they were they gave as good as they got. But were you? Did you feel like it was too physical out there? Uh, I you know I, I I didn't feel like it was. Um, I just thought there were some times where, especially early in the game, you know I think they tried to establish some stuff. You know obviously they were calling fouls on. Uh, they they I mean they called some good fouls on us, and we can't do that. Um, but, of course, I thought they missed some on them. But that's just, you know, because I'm biased. But I, I thought they were working really hard. And, you know, that's how it's going to be. So our team has to adjust to that. Tara, I'm thankful no one got hurt. Tara, uh, she's overshadowed at times by some of her other teammates like Cameron and, and Haley. Can you just talk about what uh, Lexi and Lacey mean mm -hmm. to this program and have meant over the years? Oh, wow. Lights out. Lights out for Lexi, right, and Lacey. Um, I think Cam kind of stated it a little bit. They, uh, they are extremely competitive. You don't have a bad day with those twins. I mean, every day they come to practice, uh, they're always the ones shooting afterwards, Lexi, Lacey, Hannah Jump, uh, maybe, uh, you know, a couple other people. They, uh, they're really, really competitive. They, uh, they're just... They're competitive in their grades. They're like four, like right at three nine nine or whatever, um, and they're they're two of the nicest people. Uh, just uh, you know, I, I am so spoiled as a coach to coach them, and I I've said this before, but I get mad at their parents because they only had twins instead of triplets. You know, they are so exceptional uh, students, student athletes. Um, you know, just uh, I, I I'm so lucky. And I'm so excited. I, I was really excited on the bench for both, you know, especially Lexi, just how she played. But obviously Lacey's so important, too, um, to be able to go play at home, you know. And whatever happens up there, you know, they, Lexi put our team on her back and, you know, just said, we're going to Spokane. I'm going to do whatever I need to do. And she did. Yeah, John Reed, uh, Lawrence Journal world they were down by a couple at half and they they played pretty controlled and poised i thought what what were they doing on the on their positive side that was bothering you well i think in the beginning of the game they were getting offensive boards um i think that you know they're uh they're a very good team uh they're a team that you know plays in a great league uh plays against great competition so th it's going to be a 40-minute game um I think we were able to get out and run a little bit. We were able to go into cam, uh, establish a low block. We had some people knocking down threes. I mean, going 13 for 26. Hannah jumps threes were huge. Lexi's were huge. Uh, you know, just uh, cam making her three early. Uh, but you know, I thought defensively we were working really hard. But in the beginning, we got hurt with some of their pick and roll action and some of their players, like um, you know, uh, uh, Franklin hit some shots that were. Uh, you know, she's usually more of a, I think, more of a facilitator. But um, I thought our defense did a really good job on, on number 13. Uh, she was our leading scorer coming in, ended up with seven. Uh, I was upset with uh, number 10 getting a wide open three in the first half. We, we just had to lock down better defensively, and I thought we did. Um, you know, they're, they're, they're a really good team, and uh, we, we, we got it going in the second half. We got out. We were more aggressive defensively. Uh, and that, that was the difference, I thought. Tara, Matthew, Walter, the next hoops. Can you just talk a little bit about in that third quarter, Lexi hits the first couple of shots, and then she just really gets it going. Were you calling things specifically to get her shots, or is that just in the flow <laughs> of your offense that she was able to just find her um, to score? That was really totally in the flow. In fact, one play we were calling wasn't even for her, and she scored on it. But, um, you know, uh, I just – I think she, she can get like this. I mean, uh, she – 
we've seen this against Oregon. She had 33. Uh, the basket was big for her, and she, uh, she knew it, and everyone else knew it. So let's give her the ball, and they did. Um, one thing I think about our team is that, you know, I, I, all of them, you already refer, referenced this a little bit, but, you know, a lot of times there is a lot of attention for uh, Cam or a lot of attention for Haley or Fran Dunks. And uh, Lexi and Lacey do a lot of the dirty work. I mean, they, they're on the floor for the ball. Um, they're in the, you know, they're, they're making, they're hustling, they're scrapping, they're super competitive. And, um, you know, I was really, I'm, I'm really glad that for today the spotlight was on Lexi. Um, but the, the rest of the team is so excited. I mean, she had to come in with a different shirt on because they drenched her with water. They didn't get her the big bucket, but they did it with the water bottles. And they're really, they're a great group. They're a really close group. And you can be happy for her because she's so unselfish. But she likes to score. <laughs> hey, Tara, uh, Ben Barker, CardinalSportsReport.com. Um, Notice you guys had 10 turnovers in the first half. Only, I think only four in the second half, if my math is correct. I'm guessing that ball security was a major part of your halftime speech to them. Kind of well, it really hurt us when you have Anna with two fouls and Haley with two fouls, and those are and Lacey are main ball handlers. And you know, um, I thought uh, people came in, but we had we, we did have too many we did have too many turnovers in the first half. They yeah we heard about that. We talked about that. Can't repeat that. I'm just wondering what you think of this tournament bracket so far. There's been some big names that have gone down the last couple of days. You know, I don't, I don't really pay attention to, um, you know, I watch. But um, first of all, I'm really proud of Lindy, how they did. I'm rooting for Arizona, you know, to keep doing what they're doing. Uh, you know, it was, uh, it was a tough game for Utah against uh, Texas. But, you know, this is the first time they had freshmen. It's the first time they've been in the tournament. They did awesome. I'm really, really excited for how uh, Lynn uh, did with her team. Um, you know, I was disappointed with Oregon. Um, I was hoping that they could pull it out. And Creighton's proved that it's not a one-trick pony. I mean, they came back and beat Iowa, which is a huge win for them. And then uh, we know South Dakota's really good. Uh, for them to pull off that win is a great win. It's, I think it adds a lot of excitement to the women's tournament. But uh, I, I didn't want it to happen to us. But, you know, our, our bracket is one, two, three, four. Oh, no, one, two, one, two, four. Three hasn't been decided yet. So uh, we, I think we're in a very tough bracket. Uh, and, uh, you know, we're playing teams that we know, you know we played against. So we, let's see who's improved the most. All right, time for one last question. Okay. Coach, um, how impressed were you with uh, Cameron's game all across the board? Double-double, two mm -hmm. steals, uh, two assists, uh, four assists, I'm sorry. Right. And two blocks and then no fouls. So just a very impressive uh, across the board game. Yeah, I wouldn't mind her getting one foul. Um, I, I thought she was awesome. She stepped up to the challenge, um, playing against Jackson. Uh, you know, Jackson blocks shots. She's very athletic. She's physical. Um, they're a very good basketball team. And I thought Cam had an excellent game. I'm really proud of her and how she's, uh, she's developed and how well she's playing. And, you know, different people, uh, you know, different people will step up for us. Um, you know, I, I think... Uh, I don't think you've seen the, the best of some people yet. You know, I thought Fran helped us a lot. Um, I thought Ashton came in and helped us. What did, what did, you know, her defense I thought was really good, her size. Um, you know, it, our returners know what it takes, and, uh, and they, they did a really good job. Thank you, Coach Vanderbilt. All right, I hope we see some people in Spokane. A recording of this press conference will be available in the NCAA Digital Media Hub at ncaa.veritone.com. Transcripts are provided by ASAP. will be posted shortly. Thank you for joining us.